Okay, I can hear and see how much time will be left for questions because she likes to talk and share. But is this working okay? Yes. Working? Okay. All right. She's my grandchild. Yes. One of her name is Talib. My name is Talib Bahadarian. I am her grandchild indeed. Mesama, how many grandchildren do you have? 23. 23 yeah. grandchildren? 23 grandchildren. 23 great grandchildren. And you even have some grandchildren's grandchildren, don't you? What? You even have some grandchildren's grandchildren, don't you? I am. You do. Other, I don't know. How many? You have a lot. <laughs> All right. So, Mizama, tell us about your family. Um, some maybe early memories you had growing up, maybe up until age seven. What were some early memories? Maybe some good memories that you had. I was born in Turkey, Antalya city, 1914, January 14th. I was grown up in an Armenian family, Armenian Christian, real Christian family. And I remember in my yard, in the yard, then our doors were not dum, 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 dum. And we saw the policeman and telling us, you will be ready, be ready tomorrow, you are going to march. We take you out. And we used to close the door and tell my father. My father went to his church. He was, uh, his name was Mohammed, the mayor of the city of Aintam. And they were in love. He lived by he loved my father very, very, very much. And he helped us to stay in Turkey till I was seven years old, I remember. So Mizama, the police officers that were coming, were they Turkish police officers? Who were they? The police officers that were coming, were they were they Turkish officers? Often they came and knocked our door. Tomorrow you are leaving. Get ready. Where did you think they were going to send you? I did. I did. I was seven years old. How do I know? <laughs> but you knew it wasn't good. Not good. Because there was war, and one day there was a bombing. Bombing. Boom. Boom. The bombs. 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 Sorry. Snipers. And we had a yard there in our, we had a turf floor, and we heard the bombs sounding, and there was, there was another family come to us. We had a big kitchen, we went in the kitchen, and another family joined us. And a baby, three years old or four years old, was in the yard. She was crying, crying. And her mother said to her, come inside, come inside. Let bomb fell, fall over you. And really a bomb, a piece of bomb mm. fell on our yard. And that baby, three years old, nearly died there before my eyes. I see it now, I see it now. I, see it now. I, see it. I hear the cry of the baby at the mother. And the baby died back in the yard, in our yard. So your, your family's lives were preserved because of your father's friendship with the Turkish mayor of Aintab. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That man of the city, mayor, mayor of the city, his name was Mohammed, and he helped us to stay and we did go for Daraklutu. Deportation. The march. The march. So, Metzema, how many years were you were your lives preserved there in Aintab before you had to leave? 1921, 1921, 1921. And how old were and you? And then I was seven years old, and we heard that French army, French group, the government there at that time, and my father was in the soldiers' army. And then we heard that French army is going to leave the country, the city of Anda, and we went, we wanted to go. One night, I saw 
two trucks coming in, two trucks, ridden by two horses, each one, each truck had two horses. And uh, like a truck, it was open. Like a wagon? Uh, like a wagon, 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 open. Open, open air. Open air. And we, uh, we heard that we, we are going to leave. My auntie had made me seven dolls, clothes, white clothes. I was crying, take my babies together, take them. I don't know, they, they didn't take it. So uh, we were another, uh, the, in the second car there was a late, in the second car there was the half of the other family, and half our family united in one. So, so just to, Ms. Ahmed, just to summarize, there were two families that were fleeing at night in horse-drawn wagons <laughs> yes. or carriages. Ms. Ahmed, can we back up a little bit? Before you fled Aintab, you have shared with us about some images you saw from your door when you were peeking through the door. What did you see? What did you hear? I hear crying, crying loud. Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I'm thirsty. Mommy, I can walk no more. But the gendarmes had whips in their hands. It just fly it, all children, all the fathers and mothers. And they were crying, and we were crying also. My father worked among the Armenians people to defend us, defend us. Where were they going when you're saying you were looking through the door, through the cracks in the door, you saw the, the children fleeing, but where were they going? They were being driven to where? We didn't, we didn't know where. For slaughter. We heard that they are slaughtering, killing people during that time. And there were many, many, many people died. I, these days I, I think about pregnant women. They have to deliver the baby. And they used to take the baby and threw it out up. They mm -hmm. tore the body out of the baby bodies and took off the babies out. And then they keep the they keep the babies were they were dead. And they keep the mothers on the way that I took them. It's it's a hard thing these days I cry very much. My people, my people, not only Aintab, in the other places, we had a great trouble weeping and crying. We suffered. So one at night, two, each car, each car, each car had two horses. There was two cars came up, another family came in the other car, and we, we, each family was divided in two, one in the first car, and the remainder in the other car. So we started to, to move, because we heard that French army is leaving Eintracht, so we were fighting, we, we were united. My father was a soldier in the army of French army. And the French people started to move, to go out of Antep. So we started, and the man, that man, that mayor, Mohammed, he said, I protected, I protected you for this time, but after this you have to find a way to get out. So we were on a, so we were walking, we were going with the car, with the horse ridden car. And then a lady was seated before me. She was from the other family. And we exchanged our places. And there were iron rails like this all. There was iron. And I was holding like this. And the two horses were taking us up. And that lady said, Little girlie, would you like to change your place? I am not comfortable here. I said, OK, Grandma. So we came down from the carriage. I took her place before the iron, iron bar, and she came back on me. After that, it was evening time. 
at the, our horses got mad. They were, they were running with everyone. They just jumped up at the, up at the, up at the, at our car. I was seven years then. That old lady instantly died. The iron bar came to her neck and she died instantly. Mm. And that, the carriage carrier, the carriage, the carriage carrier, the carriage carrier said, this old lady died for this little girl. That, that oh. little girl I was, I was seven years old. She died. Well, I, there was a hollow, very deep river down, and the river was passing by. It was a very deep being. river, mm. and I was happy. It is, it is, it is, it is. And the deep gash uh, scar on her leg that she shows from here to here. Excuse me. You can see it. <laughs> I was hanged to this, and my head was by my shoulders down, and I was just joining. Who found? Who found that? Who? 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 I was just I was under deep in that boat. I fell down. I would go down, down it, and perhaps in that water, and the enemies would eat me. So you were hanging by something was that was hanging, wrapped around your leg. I was hanging on this stuff. Over a deeper beach. The scar is hit, it's like this, like this. And they took, so my auntie was with me, and my brother Abraham was with me. And my auntie cried, please take off, take up this little girl, take up, she will fall down. And they threw me up. Mm. And that blood, blood gushed up. Hmm. Just falling down like like a little river. Yeah. And then they went to Kilis. Kilis is a town between Aleppo and Damascus. I remember that there was thunder, they called thunder. It was square square table, four legs and they, and it they covered it like like with a blanket or like it's something else. And I remember myself putting my feet down and the blanket came out. I was it was it was very cold winter. So I know that it happened on, on a winter winter day. It was winter time. So we stayed in Aleppo and they went to Damascus, Syria, the capital of Syria. I don't remember that. In, in Syria, we, a doctor was there. There was a doctor, they were our neighbor. We used to play, the small children play with each other. On the roof, we used to play. And that, well, he, Yeprev, his name was Yeprev, he was perhaps seven, eight years old. And I loved him. He was a beautiful day, boy. How old were you? I was seven years old. I was seven years old. And that boy fell from the rooftop and he died. He was so beautiful and I liked him so much. <laughs> Your first love. My first love. <laughs> I was so beautiful. Ms. <laughs> Oma, what happened after you went to Aleppo? Did you stay in Aleppo? I, I remember how long I don't know that thunder that there was no what do you know? No heater? No heat? No heat, no heat. It was charcoal. They used to burn charcoal, put it in a place and put it under the table, that uh, square table, and they covered all of it. I remember I used to lay down that I may keep hard. And they had gone to Damascus, Syria, I don't remember. My brother said the other two years ago, you were fainted most of the time. You were fainted. You didn't know where you were going. 
You went from Aleppo to Damascus. You don't remember the journey. What happened in Damascus? Did you stay there long? In Damascus, in Damascus it was 1925. 1925 in Damascus. Uh, we lived in a Muslim country, Muslim area. area. And then my father's job was which is very sad. Copper? Copper? Copper, He had 20 workers over there. And we used on the top, second floor. And this was Sunday, we had gone to Baptuma. Baptuma is Christian area. And we had gone to the church, and, and, and when we returned from the church, the bombs were going off, and the snipers. And there was a big store there. The, there came a man, tall, very tall, and half black, half white, and he had my mother's hand. What are you doing here? Go, go, it's safe, it's not safe. So we had to go. We, we had to go there. And from there we entered to an area where Christian Arabs used to live. Wherever we knocked the door, they didn't open. They heard about the massacre of Armenians in Damascus and No one opened the doors. At one time, they opened the door. And all eight days, we were praying, Lord God, protect us, protect us. Because we heard that many, many Christians in outskirts of the city, there was, they came and killed us, boys, young boys, and fathers. So after and my father knew the officials. officials. He gathered them those days and they came up for them. They, they came to enter that court of that area where the Christians were hitting themselves. So they could enter the, that area. So 1925, you were 11. So now you're in Damascus, you fled from uh, within Damascus into the Christian quarters, Arab Christian quarters. And uh, your father, again, being friends with some leaders, made kebab for them to try to build those relationships. Um, and then, Nathan, you, you had shared a story where um, there was a woman whose, um, whose children, who was pleading for the life of her children and for the life of her husband. She had gold all over her arms. Do you remember? She had gold all over her arms, and she said, take my gold. But don't kill my children. Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember Anush. Her name is Anush. My father gathered many widows and the families. 17, 17 families. And the train was not, was not working. We could go anywhere. Then the trains started to work. The 17 families, their children were, there was a named Anush among them, and she had girls and three sons, and she was very, very rich. So in Damascus, outskirts of the city, there were many around their tents, the Armenian families who came from Godonatsk, they came, my father gathered them, and there was a lady, Anush, she used to cry and cry. When they went there, she, they found, the enemy found them. And she had many bracelets, golden bracelets. She gave, she gave them, and they killed her three sons, Anushu's three sons. And the lady said, don't kill my husband, don't kill my husband. Take all this gold to you for you. They took the gold and everything. And they killed her, her other's husband before her eyes. Mm. She used to cry and cry and cry all the time. And three daughters, they were alive. We were in Beirut. We came to Beirut. Can I mention real quick? So you left um, Syria. 
on trains when they started working again. Your father, having a heart for widows and orphans, gathered 70 widows and orphans. And children and we came to Lebanon to quarantine is the money rules is governmental governmental place like a shelter or refuge so refugee camp. for a time we, we stayed there we lived there then we came Ramadan Ramadan is the feast of Muslims and they came and they took our places and we were we were thrown from there to under tents, under tents. We lived, we lived to keep it under tents. We were displaced. Uh -huh. You were displaced from your home, and then you had to live in tents. When did it? When did it happen? When the the boys would throw rocks at you and make certain motions to you? Where Where was that? When was that? The boys that would call out to you that you're going to die, and they would make this motion to you. When we came to Damascus. Small boys, there was no running water, clean water. We used to go to take our pails and go to fountains. On the boat, there were heads of Yezeru, Yezeru, Doeru, of cows, cows, heads. Water came up. We filled our pails with clean water for drinking, for making food. And the Boys who were uh, living, they used to throw stones, stones over it. And they said, Amen, Amen, Tahtar Sikkim. Armenians are under the knife, under the line. Yeah. And we, we would throw out the water, and they used to go home without the water, empty pails in our hands. And we were, we were crying, we were in fear. And after eight days, the war was over. When the war was over, my father went and took 70, no, 70, huh? 70, oh yeah, you, you took 70 widows and orphans to Beirut. Yeah. And then what happened once you were in Beirut? Tell me a little about your life growing up with your uh, parents and your siblings. What, what was it like? Share some good memories. Sure. Share some good <laughs> memories. <laughs> Not. How can I share good memories when I don't have good terms? Uh, How can I? Whatever that I saw, I lived through, I can tell that. And I, when I see this, Sireli, my Sireli, Anushik, people, young people, full of life. The life is before you, you have to live. You have work to do for the kingdom of God. Because we, are, we came, now I, I am 101 years old. I am finished every day. I am looking forward to see my mother, my son, and my loved ones that are to unite. And someday, Jesus will come back. He will come back and take his children who loved him. Because I, I sit in my chair there, in my wheelchair, and I say, Jesus, why did you come to this earth? Why you were beaten, scolded, beaten, and six hours dead on the cross? Why did you do this for me? I love you. Why did you do this for me? It said, he says, I love you. I love you. Jesus loves each one of you. And he has and he says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden and tired of life, come to me. I will give you life everlasting and live among you together. Come unto me. He says he is inviting us to him. Let us have Jesus in our hearts. He loves us. And he died for each one of us. He had no sin. But he went to the cross for you, for you, for each of you. And he loves us to the end of our life. Let us come to him. He'll be right here. I was, then we came to 
They look from when the war was finished in Damascus. They came to live there in Kerbalo. Where did you first learn about the Bible? Yeah, it's okay. Where did you first learn about the Bible? Tell me, you, you used to share about your, your dad gathering the children around him. Tell about that. That's a good memory. Yeah, a good memory is in, in the city of Aintal. I remember he had five, he was five. I am the third. That one was born in Damascus and the seventh one in so well, your dad would gather the children uh, yeah. around. I up when I was children. I remember my father sitting on my mat, so and like this cross legged, that, and the Bible in his on his knees, and he was waiting for us. We were five children there. Then my mother used to take our hands and go to my father and he said around him. And he read from the Bible. He told about Jesus Christ. And he sang and he prayed. I love it. I love it to remember that very, very, very much we were one and praying and singing to Jesus. Someday we will be one nation of and we will have one shepherd. And who is that? Can you tell me who is that shepherd? It's Jesus, Jesus Christ the Lord who came to this earth to die for me and for you. He died for you. Can you sing that song to us? The, the song you would sing. What song would you sing with your dad? When we were in Antep, I don't remember going to church, but in houses, I would, we used to have Bible study. You heard the word. Il va t'avoir un petit par la presse là. La 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 la. Ils ont sont à l'air. I have a photo. So I don't remember if you go to church. Because it was war time. First World War started 1914. I was born in 1914. When you went to Beirut, you went to Beirut, uh, and your dad had a heart not only for the widows and orphans, but also for those who were affected by the genocide, the, the crippled, the blind. Tell us about the work that your family did with those people. Yeah, we were in Beirut. I don't know who is from Beirut. You, don't, you are not from Beirut. You are born in America or somewhere else. But, 